I think I have a slide, if you could put that up, Kurt. Some of you have, may have seen this slide, this weather forecast from last week. <laughs> Whew, we survived the Mayan calendar. <laughs> All right, enough of that. <laughs> the message is quite simple today. Let's enjoy life, but let's keep it real. <laughs> right? Enjoy life. God is a God of joy, but he's also real. You see, many may be celebrating because, hey, we survived the Mayan calendar, but then they continue to live in myths and fantasies. They'll think of another thing, thing to worry about, to think about. And sadly, many will celebrate Christmas without Jesus Christ. I've been to Japan, and <laughs> you know they celebrate Christmas there? Not about Christ. It's about gift giving. Many live in myths and fantasies because they say Merry Christmas and they celebrate Christmas. They don't think about Christ at all. Many will say, how can there be a loving God when there's so much pain and suffering in the world? How would you answer that question? I'm sure you've probably been asked that recently. Perhaps you struggle with that question as well. We'll come back to that question later on. But let's note some major realities in life. Let's get the basics done. First of all, is there pain and suffering in this world? <laughs> is there pain and suffering in this world? You notice that I chose the families in Connecticut to pray for. They need our prayers. Remember that. Just thinking about little kids being shot hurts. Can you imagine God? Can you imagine the pain of those families as they're trying to celebrate? Merry Christmas. Recently in our neighborhood, innocent people were shot in Brookfield, in Oak Creek. In the Philippines, the typhoon killed over 1,000 people, left over 27,000 people still homeless right now. How many people in America do you think die of cancer every day? I'm surprised at this. Maybe I'm wrong, Dr. Matt or other nurses. Anybody know how many people die of cancer in America every day? Any guesses? 1,500. 1,500. Even that, every day. 1,500 people die of cancer right here in our home. How many of you know of someone who got killed by a drunk driver? Many of us have experienced this. Is there pain and suffering going on in the world? You see, this is reality that we need to face. And it started way, way back. Remember, Adam and Eve were created by God, and God rested on the seventh day. And who was God with? God was with Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and who else? On the seventh day, he already created everything, including Adam and Eve. And God rested with Adam and Eve. Heaven on earth. There was no pain. There was no suffering. They were free to live with God. Then sin came along, and pain and suffering has been going on. There is pain and suffering in our world. Let's not put our too many blinders on. Let's live life and enjoy it, but let's make sure we're real. Now, you're probably wondering what this has to do with Christmas. Well, hang on. I'll get there. But again, let's enjoy life, but let's keep it real. You see, some people, even Christians, don't want to accept any pain and struggles. <laughs> and there is a sect of Christianity that's called the health and wealth gospel that will tell you, just go to the Lord, everything will be fine. That's putting blinders, not living in reality. So we need to make sure we understand that there will be pain and suffering in this world. My brother is in the hospital right now. He had a minor stroke. Liad, daughter loved the Coronas. Praise the Lord, a new baby, River Thomas, but she's struggling with some health issues after there's pain 
going on, and we need to keep that in mind. There's pain and suffering, but now, let's go through these pictures. Let's just pause and meditate on some of these pictures. And we'll just go to them maybe every 10 seconds. like this one. Did you catch that one? I'm not a cat lover, but that's a pretty good picture. <laughs> Trying to save the cat while the guy is hanging on to his friend. Filipinos are, you know, ingenious. Look at that, the chairs they have in those rafts. <laughs> They're probably serving sarsi and uh, buko juice. <laughs> Food pantry. People donating food. I hope you saw the goodness in people. Reality number one, there is pain and suffering in this world, but reality number two is there is good in people. There is goodness around. And why is that? We read in Genesis 1.27, God created mankind in his own image. God is good all the time. And we're created Every person is created in God's image. He created them, male and female. And Psalm 105, verse 5 tells us, For the Lord is good, and His love endures forever, forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. And you and I are created in that image. We have, each one of us, has a potential for good, Potential for faithfulness, righteousness, and joy. And so reality number three in life, God is good all the time and loving all the time. And he created people in his image. That's fantastic reality as we struggle with life here on earth. Yes, there will be pain and suffering, but there is goodness in people because we're all created in his image, a God who is good and loving. God has given us life. He is good and loving, so we are to enjoy life, the goodness of God, the love of God, but we must keep it real. We must deal with the pain and suffering of life. We must deal with how we interact with people. We must deal with this God who created us. And so as I alluded to earlier, people are going to come and say, how can there be a loving God when there is so much pain 
and struggles in the world. What's the simple answer? Why are we here? What are we celebrating? Christmas. So, <laughs> this is what, what God just brought to me as I'm looking at scriptures and praying about it. The answer to the world's questions is always Christmas. Christ. Some will say the resurrection is the answer to all the questions of the world, but how could Jesus Christ rise from the dead when he wasn't born to live and die? Christmas. And it, again, the message is quite simple. Let's enjoy life, but keep it real. Do we really have the reality of Christmas? Because it is the answer to these basic questions about life. How can there be a loving God when there's so much pain in the world? Christmas. What is Christmas? Just toss out what? What is it? Birth of Christ. What else? What is Christmas? What else do we do? What is Christmas? What would people say about Christmas? What is Christmas? A holiday. Celebration. Gift giving. We got all sorts of things, right? To celebrate Christmas. We can say many things about Christmas, but here it is. The basics. Christmas is about God becoming a human being. That's the basics of Christmas. And, 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 and I make a point of that because it has so much significance. What do you think is the most significant truth about this statement? What is the most significant thing? Well, there it is. <laughs> you can go ahead and go to that. <laughs> it is about love. God became a human being because of love. And so we have all these questions. The answer is love, agape love. And it starts with Christmas. Of course, all the promises from the Old Testament. But then 1 John 4, 9 tells us, this is how God showed his love amongst us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. That's reality. If you're living your life without him, you're living in myths and fantasies that will get you nowhere. And if you want to go back and listen to the other messages in Luke, we've talked about only two places you will end up after your life here on earth. So be careful how you treat Christmas. And this love, how great is this love of God through Christmas? When Jesus came to this world, let me share a couple of things. First of all, how much pain and suffering do you think there is in heaven? None. There is no pain. There's not even a tear in heaven. Heaven would not be heaven if there's pain there. And remember what we learned last week from Luke 16, 25, when Lazarus was brought and there was comfort all of a sudden. He was living his life in pain. The dogs would lick his sores. That's how painful his life was. He died, but because of his heart and his belief in God, he died and went to heaven, and immediately he was comforted. Heaven is about comfort and peace. The book of Revelation, at the end of the Bible, we read in heaven, there will be no more death, there will be no pain, there will be no crying. It's continuous celebration, peace, and joy. Where did Jesus come from? Heaven. And then he, 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 he came here. What city was Jesus Christ born in? What city? Bethlehem. Yeah, Ariel knows. Bethlehem. If I could see that map. Bethlehem is where? In the Middle East. Ever since Noah settled with his sons, there's been trouble in the Middle East. And 2,000 years ago, Middle East, was full of troubles because of religion and power and greed, but also the Roman Empire. 
ruled over that area. The Jewish people, including Jesus, who was born into the Jewish family, they were oppressed. They were slaves, really, to the Romans. Jesus came from heaven, ended up in the Middle East, where he was oppressed. And where did Jesus end up being born? Ariel? Where was Jesus? Yes, and then where? Where was he born? What building? With what? In a manger and a stable, right? So Jesus, Jesus ended up with all the animals, with all the dirt. And were there diseases when Jesus was born? <laughs> if you go to the Bible, there are infectious diseases, skin diseases, parasitic infections, pneumonia, tuberculosis, smallpox, smallpox, anthrax, malaria, you name it. Jesus left heaven, which was perfect, no pain, no crying. And then he ends up in a messy world. You see the picture of how much God loves you? God, Jesus Christ, left perfect, holy heaven and came to this messy, dirty, evil earth. Why? Because he loves you. He left his perfect home for you. And let us remember, not only was he born, he lived in this messy world for how long? Over 30 years. He walked amongst men with all the dirt and garbage. He was tempted with every evil. You see, we focus too much on a baby in a manger on Christmas. When really, it is about God, Jesus Christ, God himself, sacrificing himself by leaving heaven for us. Through Christmas, God, Jesus, sacrificed himself by leaving heaven for us because he loves us. Let's keep that real. Let's keep that focus. He didn't have to leave heaven. He did it for you. And secondly, I'm just finished quickly here. Through Christmas, God, Jesus Christ, became a human being to suffer and die for all of our sins on that cross. Again, because he loves you and me. That's what Christmas is about. Let's enjoy life, but let's keep it real. Do we really have a grasp of the reality of Christmas God becoming a human being here on earth for you and me. Christmas is to be celebrated with that understanding of God's love for each one of us and how big that love is. Would you just quietly take a moment right now, think about Jesus Christ, Ponder about God's love for you through Christmas. God leaving heaven, coming on this earth for you. There's a Christmas because God loves you. Enjoy Christmas, but we need to keep it real. Remember, his name is Emmanuel. God with you and me. Take a moment to quietly pray as we continue our worship.